Well, uh, here I am in the apartment. It's about uh, as bad as I figured it would be from the looks of the place <laughs> from the sidewalk. Uh, I'm on the top floor, the fifth floor, and there's no elevator. The hallways are dark. That's the first thing the leasing guy apologized to me about. He's kind of a specimen. Um, his name is Dennis. How do I describe him? Basically, uh, a more nervous, more insecure Clark Kent. <laughs> he met me down in the lobby to sign the papers. He was wearing a, a plaid flannel shirt and these pants that were like uh, something from, from a bin at an army surplus store. He says awesome a lot. Oh, you, you put your social security number on the right line. Awesome. Uh, let me see here. Strode, Strode Realty. Never heard of him. So uh, this is going to be my first night in the city. I'm, <clears throat> I'm not going to look for a job this week. I'm just going to walk around the neighborhood and, and do some writing while I'm still kind of inspired. I'll go bring up some stuff from the van and see if there's a good diner in the neighborhood. I do like the sounds from outside the window already. So this place has exactly one amenity, not counting free gas heat, and I'm enjoying that amenity right now. Um, Dennis called me today. He forgot to tell me about this little perk. The first thing he said was, uh, oh, oh the, the smoke detector works? You tested it? Awesome! <laughs> but um, then he told me that on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, there is free garbage pickup. All I have to do is put my can outside the door, like so, and Allegedly, sometime after 10 tonight, some mysterious entity will come and take the bag away. Thank God, too, because to, to go up and down the steps with trash and have to go up back into the alley and hurl it over the lip of the nasty graffiti-strewn dumpster, that's just not a scene I'd be into for too long. So, we'll see if this works. Life at 3501 West Gate Street. It does not get any better. Uh, yeah, I can't sleep. <laughs> Second night in a row. I'm still just disoriented. Just the traffic sounds alone. There's sirens every half hour. There's train tracks somewhere nearby. I don't even understand where I walked around. And uh, you know, I'm lonely. I mean, new guy in town who hates people anyway. I miss Laura. It's almost four, so about five minutes ago I heard footsteps out in the hallway and some other kind of noise, and I'm guessing that this is this was the, uh, the trash contractor. Maybe they work like an overnight shift to do a bunch of buildings in the area. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see if this worked. Oh. Oh, yep, the, the bag is gone, and the trash can is here, so that, uh, that's a thing. Except, whoa. Okay, this is interesting. Let me think about this for a second. All right, so I heard something thunking in the trash can after I pulled it in, so I opened it up, and now I am holding what was left inside it. It is a Bible. I'm the one who put it into the trash like eight hours ago. It's just this paperback I got at a dollar store a year ago. I figured, okay, I want to be a writer. I should have a Bible for reference, just like a thesaurus or a world almanac. But I'm accumulating too much stuff, so I'm going to start throwing little things away, and this was one of them. I put it into the trash bag with the other garbage and maybe some trash dude 
saw it kind of poking at the bag. Maybe he could read the spine through it. And he thought a Bible isn't something that should be thrown away, maybe? All right, you passive-aggressive freak. If it didn't occur to you to donate it or give it away, I'll try again Wednesday. Well, today's been kind of a loss so far. It's been raining since the time I finished my cereal, so I haven't been out walking. I tried to write a little, but I got thinking about my money problems instead, and I wound up doing some math at the bottom of the page where I'm supposed to be writing a short story, and the next thing I knew, I was back trying to get through the Silmarillion for like the seventh time. I was lying on my butt. So that's what I'm doing now. I'll call the cable company here in a bit so I can have the internet hooked up, but it's kind of nice to be without it, actually. It feels like I'm living in the turn of the century instead of 2018. This is as close as I'm ever going to get to being Nathaniel Hawthorne or Jack London, probably. So I should enjoy it. Whoa. I'd say it's a salesman or something, but they wouldn't be walking up five flights. All right, sure. Let's see what happens. Things just got very strange. That was some woman. She had kind of a 60s style bob haircut really out of date and, and not in a hipster way, just in a, I didn't notice the calendar had changed in the last 50 years kind of way. She was wearing a long winter coat, definitely overkill. It's like, you know, 45 outside. She said to me, is the alligator still for sale? The stuffed alligator? That's what she said, no hello or anything. I just stood there like, huh? The look of disappointment on her face would have been comical if it hadn't been so sad. When I told her there was no alligator for sale here, she said she was sorry, and then she walked all the way down the corridor to the far end, and she disappeared down the stairs. I could hear her shoes on them. Clomp, clomp, clomp. I notice I keep thinking about it as a corridor and not a hallway because it's so dark and old in here. Everywhere in the building it's dark and old. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been feeling weird since I sat back down and I know why now. There was an alligator for sale. A stuffed alligator, but this was... When I was a kid, like nine years old, I wanted some money for a bike, so I asked my mother if I could sell my giant stuffed alligator. It was bigger than I was, that was the novelty of it. And she took me through the process of, of, of putting an ad in the paper, and then someone came by on a Saturday, I think it was the pastor at our church, actually, and gave me like five dollars, and, and that was it. That was... 24 years ago now? And about 150 miles away, so... That's... That's a weird coincidence. I don't know if those sounds got picked up. I was holding the recorder just inside the door to the apartment. That was the garbage person outside in the corridor. 
It's 3.25 in the morning. Now, now this apartment is an efficiency and I could hear him in the middle of it. So I assume other people can too. Ah, damn it, I forgot to throw the Bible away. It's sitting there on the windowsill, judging me. Okay, I just got back from a walk. I went down to the uh, the old war cemetery a couple miles away. Great atmosphere down there, but my phone rang when I was there and I answered it and it was Dennis. He called me to tell me that he was trying something uh, in the building again this year, a, a, a door decorating contest for Halloween. $20 gift card to the winner on each floor. That was that was all he wanted to tell me because I, I, I guess at 3501, they don't put up flyers in the building like normal people. The, the, the property manager calls everyone personally. My God, well, uh, I may just participate if I can keep my decorating budget to like five bucks. Dennis. <laughs> Night again, rain again. I'm having, I'm having ramen for dinner again. I splurged and spent for the 99 cent packets, the spicy stuff imported from Japan. I wrote a little bit, but there's weirdness here in this building. There's something kind of indefinable. It's getting to me. I went down to check my mail and stretch my legs. And, and what I've been doing is traversing each floor to take a look around. There's only six apartments on each floor, so 30 in all, I guess like a couple, maybe a couple in the basement. I never seem to pass anyone. I never hear music coming from behind the doors or anything. I've seen two people, one, a really old Indian guy with really long hair who went past me carrying a laundry basket. And the other one was a really unhappy looking dude in a, in a thrift store business suit. But I noticed tonight that one of the residents has gone to the effort of putting something up on their door for the Halloween contest, someone down on the fourth floor. It's not a poster they put up so much as a big color printout, like they'd had it made. And at first, I wasn't sure what I was looking at, but then, since, like a lot of people, I've wasted half my life watching horror movies, it, it came to me. It's a shot from Night of the Living Dead. And there's a scene where a young blonde woman, uh, Barbara, right? That's her name. She's alone in the farmhouse near the beginning, and she goes up the stairs, and she sees a corpse with most of its face gone, and one eye in the skull is staring at her, and she freaks out. This big printout taped to the door on the fourth floor is the shot of that face in the dark, that corpse's face lying there at the top of the stairs. And I'm sorry, but that is way too disturbing for a Halloween contest. There's no caption, there's no context, there's no construction paper pumpkins dancing around it to kind of mitigate it. Nothing like that. Whew. It's noon on Tuesday. About three minutes ago, I went to the window just to see... Uh, there's a, a a cat in the window sometimes in a building across the alley. I just look out there once in a while to see if if it's there. Nice little black Siamese, big eyes. But I looked down, down near where the dumpster is. So the alley is just wide enough for one car or a truck to drive down if it kind of squeezes along. And there was a car down there idling and there was someone standing beside it. It was the woman who came to my door the other day. The, the alligator woman. She was looking right up at my window, I swear to God. She saw me. She just looked, I don't know, sad. And we kind of held eye contact and then she turned and she got 
into the car, this big old, like, light blue station wagon. Um, and, and, and she kind of cruised slowly out of the alley. It was like she'd been waiting down there for me to see her, and, and she wanted me to know how disappointed she was. All right, let's just see if the, uh, the trash man did his job last night. I certainly heard him out there as my hopes of getting any real sleep slowly disappear. Oh. oh. Okay. The Bible is back again. Bag's gone, but here's the Bible. I was in a mood last night and a little drunk, so I put it right on top of the bag to kind of get his goat. Whoa, 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 whoa. He wrote something on the back cover. You shouldn't throw this away. All caps, no punctuation. Oh, wow. Okay, well, now we have a war on our hands. This is exactly what I need in my life right now. It's late and I've been drinking again. Just beer. It's all I can afford at the moment. I actually started to head outside an hour ago, but it got cold, so I just uh, you know, traversed floors of the building. Only one other person has thrown their lot into the Halloween door decorating contest, someone on the second floor. They too decided to put up a still frame from a movie, big printout, three feet high, taped to their door. Scotch tape. There's a scene in Misery where Kathy Bates swings a mallet and shatters James Conn's foot as he lies there in bed, just destroys it. And this still frame shows the exact moment when the mallet hits the printing is kind of blurry because of the motion that just makes it so much worse what have I moved into I just didn't feel like going anywhere today I did finally go downstairs around one my laundry crisis has gotten pretty intense I had to do something about it so I took the stairs all the way to the basement Smelled like apples down there for some reason. I went into the laundry room. It's got like three washers and three dryers, some brand I've never heard of. And Dennis was in there. He was sitting on the windowsill. He had his knees drawn up to his chest. He was just sitting there looking out the window, looking forlorn. Though all you can see from that window is a little bit of the sidewalk. He saw me and he was like, awesome, you're going to wash your clothes. Make sure you slide the coin tray in extra hard on the middle one. I put my stuff in and I know that none of the other machines was going. So what he was doing down there, I don't know. I just wanted to leave fast, but he was asking me if I was settling in, if I liked the place, all that. I said, well, God, what did I say? I said, the vibe is a little different from what I was expecting. And he got kind of serious looking and he said, oh, oh, oh I know we have a few tenants uh, who, who try to one-up each other every year during the Halloween contest. I, I, sh I should make better rules, but, but Christmas is coming. And then he didn't say anything after that. That's how he ended the sentence, as if I was supposed to understand the meaning of that. Christmas is coming. I said, later on, Dennis, 
and I left and he was gone when I went to put my stuff back in the dryer. I was, I was walking back toward the stairs and a door opened down the hall, one of the basement apartments. A woman was going in. She had something in her hands. It was two halves of a stuffed animal. A big one, like five feet long. An alligator. It looked like she'd scavenged it from a dumpster or the side of the road or something. It had been ripped in two. Stuffing was hanging out everywhere. It was her. It was the woman. She lives here. When she, when she went in, I saw something on the floor just inside the apartment in the foyer part. It was another stuffed alligator. And then the door shut and she was gone. The one I had when I was a kid was named Barnabas. The dryers are pretty good here. I like it when my clothes get that toasty. It only took like a dollar to get them that way. It's uh, 1.15 in the morning. I came out here to, to walk and um, go down the street and get a pack of cigarettes. I haven't smoked in like four years. There's something uh, on the door of apartment 505, which is two doors down from me. It's a collage of images. Uh, the biggest one is like 11 by 17. It's autopsy photographs. It's a, oh, what's the word, it's a progression. They look pretty authentic. It's October 17th, still two weeks to go before the end of the Halloween door decorating contest. All right, I, I'm not leaving this place until I dispose of a certain book. I, before I left the apartment, I ripped it down the spine about six different places so let's get it on Okay, so 19 years ago, back when I did a lot of uh, journaling and recording my thoughts and so forth, because I wanted to be some kind of writer, um, I lived for, I think, less than a week at this building I'm coming up on now, 3501 West Gates. And I so wish I still had those recordings because I would love to hear what I, I sounded like back then. I was pretty messed up. 
I was drinking a lot. Um, I kind of over dramatized things that happened to me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's all true. It's just that I, I overreacted to things because I was a drama addict. That's part of the reason I had to stop putting my thoughts on audio. But I've never forgotten that week. I remember it pretty vividly. And the last sight I ever had of this place, is this the right turn? Yes, this is it. Um, the last sight I ever had, I mean, I freaked out and, and I moved my stuff out before dawn one day. Uh, I just I just put a bunch of stuff in my van. I left some things behind even. And uh, I remember I was pulling away from the curb and I looked back and in the rear view mirror, I saw uh, the property manager just kind of appear, pop out of the building. God knows what he was doing up or there that early, but he had that weird habit of just appearing places. I forget his name. And and, and I will never forget what he was yelling at the van as I as I drove away. And he was running and his, his big weird feet clomping on the sidewalk. He was yelling, I can explain! I can explain! Like pleading. And I've, I've, I've always just wondered, like, explain which part, you know, explain which part of what happened to me. Anyway, um, yeah, here we are. And y yeah, the place looks, looks a little bit different. I mean, I'm sure the whole city has changed a lot in 19 years, but, uh, well, let's, let's, let's check this out. I'm inside here. So it looks like at some point they tried to rent the first floor out as offices. There's a signboard here. A bunch of stuff I never heard of. Gebney Insurance, some dentist. But everything's gone. Everything's super musty. Abandoned. I just walked right in. And this is it. Doors wide open. 509. This is where I technically lived. Yeah, there's just <clears throat> debris and mold in all the hallways. It's pretty creepy. Thank God it's noon. You know, I don't know that anyone I've ever told the story to ever really believed me. That's what kills me. It was all just such a fever dream of strangeness. Oh my god. The cat's still there. In the window across the alley, the Siamese. I guess that's possible. I swear, just standing here again, I feel 